Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm super excited to share with you a summary of the book, Build by Tony Fidel, an unorthodox guide to making things worth making. Tony Fidel, the mastermind behind the creation of the iPod, iPhone, and Nest Connected Home System, has distilled his life's work into this one must-read guide. You're about to discover Tony's straightforward advice on how to build successful products, businesses, and careers, and say goodbye to those late-night panic moments. In this video, we'll delve into Tony's hard-learned lessons, including why your product should be a painkiller, not a vitamin, and the truth behind who actually made the first iPhone. So, grab a pen and paper and get ready to take notes, because you're about to discover the tips and tricks you need to turn self-doubt into success and build the things worth making. Let's dive in. Idea number one. Let's talk about the idea of using your early adulthood to explore and make the most of your opportunities. Have you ever heard of the company that created the first iPhone? It wasn't exactly called the iPhone, it was called Magic Link, and it was made by General Magic. Tony Fidel worked at General Magic for four years and despite the product's failure, he learned so much from the experience. You see, early adulthood is the perfect time to take big strides in your career and figure out what you're truly passionate about. It's the time to take risks, try new things, and find what you love to do. And once you find it, don't let go. Embrace it. Make friends with people who share your passions, find a mentor, and get a job in the field you love. Now, you don't have to go all in right away, but determine what you want to learn and the types of people you want to work with. From there, you'll find the resources you need to build the things that matter to you. So, don't be afraid to fail. Use your early adulthood to do as much as you can, learn from your failures, and make things worth making. Idea number two. You might remember Steve Jobs and his legendary attention to detail. No pixel was left unturned when Jobs was in charge. And you know what? Tony thinks that's exactly what managers should be doing, setting the bar high and leading by example. It's not micromanaging, it's just making sure everything is up to snuff. But managing a team is not just about doing your old job. It's about helping others do their jobs well. If you find yourself doing your old job, it's a sign that something is off kilter. The key to keeping your focus on managing is to focus on the outcomes instead of the steps to get there. Think product development, design, marketing, sales processes, and put someone in charge of each process. Then, let your team do what they do best. Regular meetings are a great time to check in with your team and make sure everything is moving in the right direction. Keep a list of your worries, but also a section for ideas and ways to improve. Show your team that their thoughts and opinions matter, and share your mission and passion with them. It's all about steering the ship, not trying to control every little detail. Idea number three. When it comes to selling your product, don't just focus on the what and the how, but the most important factor, the why. Think back to Steve Jobs' famous iPhone speech. Remember how he spoke about the frustrations with other smartphones and then showed how the iPhone was the solution? That's what you should aim for. You need to infect your audience with the virus of doubt, make them aware of their current struggles and then provide the solution, your product. And remember, your product's why should be strong enough to stand on its own. It should solve a problem that many people have and be based on an idea that you just can't shake. The best ideas are like painkillers, not vitamins. They eliminate a problem and make a noticeable difference in people's lives. So before you dive into your next big product idea, make sure it's something that sticks with you, like a pain in the leg that won't go away. Give it time and see if it's an idea worth pursuing. Who knows, maybe you'll be the next Steve Jobs, with a product that people just can't live without. Idea number four. It's time to get serious about hiring. When it comes to building a diverse and dynamic team, you want to make sure you're doing it right. And that's where I come in. Just like Isabel, who started at Nest at 22 years old, 
Young and eager to learn, you want to make sure you have a mix of ages and backgrounds on your team. Hire wise 70-year-olds and passionate 20-year-olds, they'll bring different perspectives and approaches to the table. And don't forget to consider diversity in terms of backgrounds and identities. You'll get to expand your worldview and better understand your customers. But wait, before you start hiring anyone and everyone, let's make sure we have a solid process in place. You want to make sure you're getting the right people to talk to candidates. Like having an engineer on the interview board if you're hiring an app designer. And don't forget about the no assholes policy, a strict rule that'll save you from headaches in the long run. Here's a tip. During interviews, don't be afraid to ask tough questions and put your candidates to the test. Ask about their previous job and what they did about any problems they encountered. And for a real-life work experience simulation, try solving a current workplace problem together on a whiteboard. This will give you a better understanding of their thought process, empathy, and problem-solving skills. Remember, you're not just hiring for the job they can do today, but also for the problems they'll be able to solve tomorrow. So, let's make sure we're hiring carefully and building a team that'll take your company to new heights. Idea number five. As the leader of your company, it's your job to make sure everything runs smoothly and everyone is pushing their limits to achieve greatness. Now, let's talk about pushing your employees. You want to avoid coddling them, because let's face it, too many perks can make people lazy. And, as CEO, you want to strive for perfection in every aspect of your company, not just settle for mediocrity. Think about it. If you offer free gourmet meals, free haircuts, free laundry, free massages, your employees may start to think that those perks are their right. But here's the thing, when people have to pay for something, they value it more. So instead of making everything free, try subsidizing perks to give them a special feel. Your job is to quest for perfection, so make sure you're pushing yourself and your team to reach new heights. The company's mission is the cake, the perks are just a light dusting of sugar on top. So, focus on building the business, making better products, and solidifying your business model. That's what really matters. Summary. Building a successful career, product, or biz takes a whole lot of gumption and grit. If you're just starting out and trying to figure out your path, find a job that'll teach you everything you need to know about what you're passionate about. And if you're a bit further along the journey, maybe a manager or a boss, your top priority should be creating a supportive environment for your team to kill it. But if you're a CEO, well, you're the captain of the ship. Your job is to steer the ship, take risks, and make sure everyone's rowing in the same direction. And here's one more tip that'll make a big difference. Write your press release before your product is even finished. Press releases are all about getting attention and making a big impact. Write one up when you're in the early stages of product development. Then, when you're getting close to launch, go back and read it again. Does your product match up with what you wrote all those months or years ago? If it does, it's time to launch. No more delays, no more second-guessing, just get it out there and make some noise.